Hello everyone. So my name is Manjunath. So I am a faculty at Insights AS. I teach Polity, Governance and Public Administration optional. So first of all, congratulations for all those who have uh, cleared prelims. You have less than or around 80 days left. So start preparing for mains. So focus more on revision and uh, answer writing. So those issues. Those who are not able to clear prelims, so obviously we understand it's a tough time. So however, so you have to come back, so stay consistent. So what I would suggest is start preparing mostly from the mains perspective till December because you will not get time after that. You can come back to prelims by January or February and then after next prelims you have to keep focusing on revision and all those aspects. So that's why so start for mains. Fine. So especially what you have to understand is prelims GS paper has become very, very uncertain. The reason, one of the most important reason for that is the very uh, what abstract nature of the questions or you can say lack of clearly defined syllabus for prelims. So they don't have a clear cut list there. However, this is not the case for GS mains, not just GS mains, in fact for uh, public administration or any option for you for that matter if you take. So they have a clear cut list of syllabus which is defined. So automatically what will happen is if you have analyzed the uh, GS question papers from 2013, the new syllabus era till 2021, the recent mains also, you can identify the that UPSC normally stick to the syllabus. They try to ask questions on mostly in and around the same areas. So in this context, now let's look at uh, you know how GS2 matters for mains. Uh, of course, if you have gone through the syllabus, you have you can divide GS2 uh, broadly into four aspects. So first one is uh, the polity and the constitution aspects, second one is the governance aspect and the third one is social justice aspect and fourth one is international relations. On an average based on the analysis of previous year questions, 110 to 115 or 120 marks will be from polity and constitution part. Maybe on an average two, sometimes three questions will be from governance part. Four questions on an average will be from social justice. So this combinedly will be around 200 marks and 50 marks on an average from last uh, what four or five years or more than that, it is fixed for international relations, two 10 markers and two 15 markers. This is how the structure is with respect to GS2, fine. But normally if you have observed, there are challenges or mistakes that are committed by the students in GS2 paper. So for a long time actually from that uh, except those uh, this year or probably the last year, so most of serious candidates also used to score either in 80s or in 90s for in, in GS2. The most important reason for that is like let's say common reasons you can say one so most of the time like let's say they might not have a kind of a consolidated notes which you have to prepare and then try to use that in the exam so that might be lacking sometimes what happens the nature of the subtopics like especially for social justice and governance is very vague like let's say you will not be able to gauge what kind of questions will they ask because they ask a very very broad question about poverty or hunger or policies related to health or education or governance related, e-governance related and all those things. So that is one abstractness of the questions, fine. Next may be like let's say students might have prepared but the point is substantiation aspects might be lacking. That is you might not use the GS2 specific language like, like keywords like parliamentary sovereignty or collective responsibility or principle of subsidiarity, judicial overreach. So those kind of keywords might be lacking. Or like let's say the uh, use of constitution articles or you know uh, the major supreme court cases or the constitutional amendments or anything like let's say sub, uh, like let's say courts of ambedkar or the discussions in the constituent assembly those also might be lacking so overall that might have a impact on the score so that is the reason if you have observed so uh, it will come down to 80s or 90s now if you get less than average what will happen in gs any gs paper for that matter compensating that in the GS will become a very difficult task. Either you have to score that in SA or you have to score that in your optionals. Fine, so hence we have to be very cautious with respect to that. So considering these things, what we have done is, so we have, we are launching this uh, intensive bridge course for GS2, which will be starting from, as we have mentioned, from July 1st, so for a few days from now. So what we will be doing here is, based on our analysis, you know, our means experience as well as the you know, interactions with, with, with lot of students. So what we have done is we have designed this course in such a way that this is mostly based on the syllabus wise approach. So GS2 consists of 19 subtopics. So totally if you, if you, if you, uh, if you add that every subtopic will be covered in the course. So what we will do is 
So, we are following a three staged approach. First, what we will do? First, we will have a conceptual clarity on each subtopic. For example, if you take like federalism. So, what are the core of federalism? Not from prelims perspective, co mostly from the mains perspective. What are the kind of questions that they have? That is a second stage previous year question. If you have analyzed like let us say previous year questions of federalism, mostly the question will be why constitution provides for a strong center, how federalism nature has changed over a period of time in the post independence history, uh, what, what is Sarkari or Punchi commission's uh, overview on that or like let us say do you think cooperative, how cooperative and competitive federalism should be the basis for center state relation or if you look at local self governments, mostly the questions circulate around like what, what are the causes for the inefficiency of local bodies. Despite giving reservation for women, why do you think they are not functioning well? Or in parliament legislature aspect, questions will be mostly on what, like let us say how legislature will enforce the accountability of the government. Or like let us say last year they asked about composition of legislative councils, how will you improve the performance, why do you think the role of parliamentarians, MPs have reduced over a period of time. Or like let us say being the basics of constitution, they ask questions related to fundamental rights or you know constitutional morality they have asked last year like let us say 2021 mains. So, mostly questions will be circulating around this or even in election they focus more on electoral reforms, reforms in, in the election commission functioning itself that. So, if you identify based on the previous year questions, you will have a greater clarity on what should be focused on because you cannot keep on preparing for each and everything in detail. You, you know that is not how you can approach UPSC GS syllabus. Then based on that the third stage what we will do is we will discuss probable questions related to uh, all the subtopics like on average around 80, 100 topics, 100 questions in the last one and a half, two years based on that we have prepared those questions. Then we will focus on as I told the substantiation aspect, how you have to make use of introduction, conclusion because you will not have time to think and write in GS, even even in the UPSC means itself in general. So, you should have broadly what kind of introduction if I, I can use if the question is on fundamental rights, what kind of introduction I can use if the question is on India China relation or for that matter like let us say question on self help group, question on NGO, question on like let us say United Nations. Similarly, broad kind of conclusion also you can have. So, you have to tweak it, matlab change it according to the demand of the question. So, it will save a lot of time. Then we will also focus on how should you handle these abstract questions because lot of questions are there which will be very broad on sustainable development, poverty, links between malnutrition and poverty, link between what do you call as this uh, economic growth and human resource development uh, or like let us say primary health care and uh, sustainable development goals which are very very broad everybody knows. But how do you handle it in pay in that exam hall on the paper so that you can manage like more than or around like let us say 50 percent of the marks. So, that we have to focus on that in a way I keep telling that as what how should you use smart usage of the same content it is not the content which varies it is about the way you handle it, the way you present it. So, those aspects will be focusing in the course fine. Then so, normal question that we keep getting is uh, who can join the course, how can we make the best use of it. So, what I would suggest is let us say for that matter you have given mains last year, but you scored in 90s let us say 95, 90 something like that. That means you still have around like let us say what 15 or at least around 20 marks also scope is there to improve. Or let us say you have cleared prelims this year, but it was your first attempt or second attempt you have not prepared actually from the mains perspective, you do not have consolidated notes, you have not written answers, you do not know how to tackle these questions. So, obviously, we will focus on those aspects. So, it will help a lot for you, we will be completing that in 10 days on an average every day we will have 6 to 7 hours of class. So, by the end of the course obviously, you will be ready with this notes because the entire course we have designed on the on the formula of you can say like let us say a triple R approach that is first you should be able to revise multiple times. Then what you have to do you have you should be able to recall that in the exam hall so that you can produce that reproduce that on the paper. So, for that you need to have this short kind of notes and based on clear cut approach. So, that is how we have designed this and normally the question like let us say where, where, where which students have asked you sir I have not cleared prelims will it help for me because I will be rating 2023 mains and all those things or 2023 attempt. Of course, yes, because what you have to understand is this is based on syllabus wise approach and based on previous year question approach. Obviously, it will remain the same. So, it the same course or the same notes that what you make it will also help you in the next next year also. What you have to do obviously is whatever small subtopics that keeps adding some current affairs this that 
major Supreme Court judgment that you have to keep on adding. And as, as I have told in the beginning, so please give till December on mains, like let us say GS mains as well as optional mains. Make sure that you are ready with it so that by January, February, you can revise, take test, even after prelims, take test, work on those organization presentation aspects. So, that has to be your core focus, fine. And normally, few students have asked what kind of materials do we get. So, as I have told, like for every subtopic in the class itself, I will mostly dictate most of the aspects. So, you will get a kind of short notes on that. Plus, we will give you also the materials, we will give you substantiation aspect, major case studies, examples what you can use, definitions what you can use, those kind of things. Synopsis related to that around 80 to 100 questions also you will be getting. So, that is how we have designed the course. Polity, governance and social justice part I will be handling. So, international relations part Shashank sir will be handling. He handles international relations in, uh, in insights. So, so and uh, it will be from July 1st. So, our target is to make sure that you can get more than 120 plus. Thank you.